Bucknell wrote his last editorial for his award-winning high school newspaper in May, but it wasn't just his last editorial. Northwest Public Schools administrators in Grand Island, Nebraska, shut down the entire paper. It's a 54-year-old publication known as the Viking Saga, just three days after the paper went to print. Now, in a letter to parents about the school's decision to shut down the newspaper, the school superintendent wrote that the school was only temporarily pausing the paper. Quote, this decision wasn't made lightly, it wasn't made hastily, and I assure you it wasn't made because of one specific reason, as it has been incorrectly reported, end quote. The superintendent is referring to the fact that the paper's last issue was dedicated to LGBTQ issues. While the school board hasn't specified the reason for canceling the paper, the school board's vice president is quoted as saying, quote, if taxpayers read that issue, they would have been like, holy cow! What is going on at our school? The issue followed a new school policy that forced the student journalists to only use their birth names in their bylines and articles. That's a, it's a demoralizing practice known to transgender people as dead naming. Transgender people often change their names to reflect the gender with which they wish to identify. The new policy greatly affected Marcus Pennell, who is, in fact, transgender. In his last editorial, written under his birth name, he discussed Florida's Don't Say Gay bill, writing, quote, the more resources students have available to put into words what they're feeling, the more ready they'll be for anything or any person that life throws at them. Joining us now is Mindy Rush Chipman. She's the legal director for the ACLU of Nebraska. Mindy, good to see you. I, I'm waiting for the uproar from uh, conservative media across the road about uh, cancel culture and silencing people and stuff like that, it's deadly silent. You're right, Ali. Um, it has been surprisingly silent in that regard. Um, but here at the ACLU of Nebraska, we have not been silent and we are standing on the side of the students like Marcus and uh, other students that have the right under the First Amendment to highlight topics related to LGBTQ+, regardless of whether it makes school officials uncomfortable or they disagree with it. Let me uh, ask you about this. The letter that you uh, have sent to the Northwest Public Schools District Superintendent, it's incumbent upon, this is an excerpt from it, it's incumbent upon Northwest Public Schools District to restore and uphold students' rights by immediately reinstating the journalism program and school newspaper as soon as possible, developing and implementing policies that protect LGBTQ students, developing and implementing policies that protect the rights of student journalists, and four, publicly acknowledging these errors and affirming its commitment to LGBTQ inclusivity. It's very well read, uh, written four-page letter. I suspect I have a, a, a greater chance of growing hair on my head than you have to getting a positive response to that. So what happens next? Well, simultaneously with sending the demand letter, we've asked for preservation of evidence uh, related to this issue, as well as an open records request. And we have received a response from the school's legal representative saying they're working on our open records requests. And I'm hopeful that that might open lines of communication between us and school officials. All right, what? Uh, but you have made actual requests that are in line with how the ACLU generally sees these issues, right? Uh, people, journalists in many cases, including me, got their start on a high school newspaper. Um, the idea that we practice this First Amendment of the, uh, the Constitution in high school is crucial. How does it even get to this point? That's a great question, Ali. Um, it, it shouldn't have gotten to this point, and we're hopeful that through intervention, we can rectify it before any future students are deprived of the opportunity. All right. So uh, at the moment, are there people who are joining your your effort at this point? Does this become a lawsuit? All remedies are on the table at this point, um, up and in including litigation. We're working with uh, current and former students and, and families who are impacted by the decision of the school district. And like I mentioned before, we're hoping lines of communication open. But as you know, litigation is, is ultimately an option that we can um, engage in.